Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Are you praying? Chetona 
Jesus, this is why we are here tonight to declare your majesty. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, Master, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Lord, we thank you for your abiding presence. We are not ashamed to declare your praises before the nations. Let them know you are our wisdom. Let them know you are our God. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty. Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangiji Kaisayabo Nagir Mama Sunanka Ubangiji Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangiji Kaisayabo Nagir Mama be lifted from now till forever we declare that you are the Lord over Koinonia you are the Lord over this great ministry we enthrone you let no man take your place Joshua Selman cannot take your place no man can take your place you are seated alone all in a class by yourself we are only benefactors of your grace. Let the name of the Lord alone be glorified. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We declare that you are mighty. We honor you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening everybody. Thank you so much for making out the time to be here. This is our fourth graduation ceremony of the school of ministry students we're happy and we give god all the praise hallelujah let's honor our school of ministry students they are looking nice and beautiful hallelujah god bless you please be seated we have a lot to do and um i'm trusting that god will grant us the grace to be as fast as possible so that we can finish in good time those in any of the overflows outside i want you to know that god will reach you the fact that it is our graduation ceremony doesn't mean that god has lost his name as the healer the blesser the lifter and right where you are standing the lord will honor you in jesus name and for all those following us online hallelujah the lord himself will bless you and lift you from all over the nations of the world following us the lord will honor you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i just want to give a charge very brief charge to encourage our hearts and then we'll go straight to performing the functions and we're trusting that god will help us those outside can you shout hallelujah praise the lord amen now i felt stirred up in my spirit to share with us very briefly on the power of process write it down i want to share with us just for a few minutes on the power of process i think it's a word that is very timely oh by the way all those who are here specifically to um, family and friends loved ones who came from far and near to honor and celebrate with their relatives and their loved ones we honor you this is koinonia may the lord bless you you will never be the same in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord 
I had the privilege by the grace of God to learn early in life that it is dangerous for a man. Please look up. I'm teaching now. It is dangerous for a man to be committed anything at all. Money, honor, power, anointing. It is dangerous when you are given anything without adequate preparation. Hallelujah. The Bible says an heir for as long as he's a child differed not from a slave although he be lord of all. It says but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Hallelujah. I think one of the great mistakes that we make as young people especially young ministers is that we have such an obsession for results without minding process we have an obsession we want to see results signs and wonders money miracle honor prestige but we never study the processes and one of the things that i have learned doing business with god listen is that the wisdom does not come from the result the wisdom comes through the process to the result the process that leads to an end in the kingdom is more powerful than the end itself hallelujah and so we have a habit we have an attitude of trivializing process when you see a great man the first thing you admire is the flamboyancy of the honor and you know results are charismatic in nature they compel a lot of attention from people and we all love it i mean there are men of god honored here in front there are different people honored and many of us sit down and we admire these people except for the fact that any kind of success in the kingdom that is committed to you without a track record of a dealing with god will must destroy you it's not just that it will destroy you it must destroy you are we together so we have people in ministry who want 1000 members within one year you see i i challenged the school of ministry students uh, while we were rounding up our prayer and fasting session yesterday um, i was establishing some of the prayer points and then i said something that has not left my heart till now if you really want god to use you in any sphere not just in ministry fundamentally you must answer the question of why you want everything god uh, you desire god to give to you you must answer why god will never release anything to you if you cannot answer that question why why do you want a crowd there are so many men of god who when they see me the first question is what is the secret to your anointing how can i get a double portion a triple portion whatever it is and the question i ask them is why why do you want a crowd pastor why do you want money why do you want to be a millionaire and if we are to be honest with ourselves the why is usually to remedy for the frustration of complex the frustration that comes with not being regarded as a success or to satisfy the curiosity that comes with a competitive spirit unfortunately the platform upon which your desires are presented to God matter to God much more than the request so I want an anointing and regardless of what spiritual principles I obey fundamentally God will probe the motif why do you want power why do you want grace why do you want influence there are so many people copying men of God copying business people copying successful people I found out it's easier to copy a man than to pass through the process that leads to that anointing are we together everyone said there is dignity in passing through a process say it one more time there is dignity in passing through a process yeah a married woman and her husband 
when they are about to counsel a young couple or an intending couple the couple will watch the older ones living in peace and joy and assume it was always like that they will never ask questions as to how they manage their conflicts how they manage their misunderstandings how they grew into loving themselves beyond just physical and emotional connection they will not ask the question when people see a multi-millionaire they are obsessed with the car the dressing the prestige and never ask the question how were your failures how did you manage them how did you manage your pain are we together when we see an anointed man all we want is to package little offerings and bribe our way through his anointing rather than asking the question how did you manage the persecutions that came with this anointing you see every time you desire a dimension in god he will pass you through a process that makes you prepared to host that grace if not it will kill you a body has thou prepared for me the anointing does not just come the body that will host that grace must be prepared hallelujah the interesting thing about god is god will show you the destination he will show you where you are and he will never show you how you will get there because the process is too hard if he shows you you will you will quit the passion so joseph sees the sun moon 11 stars bowing to him a symbol of his destiny are we together but he's never told that he will be in a well he's never told that potiphar's wife will say he raped her are we together isn't it interesting that the moment god reveals a prophetic word over your life you would think celebration starts immediately after joseph's prophecy the first thing that happened is that he entered a well he learned he learned the 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 disappointment that comes with trusting men even the closest men to you it was a lesson he learned you need to learn certain lessons that no matter how you read them in a book you must enter the experience of them joseph made a mistake naive he had his dream he shared it with his loved ones i saw the sun the moon 11 stars they gave him the coat of many colors he was happy when he entered that well he would soon learn that even your brothers can disappoint you he soon learned that success has a side effect even to the closest people around you he soon learned that not everything told by god is for public ears the bible says and mary kept these things to herself say process there is wisdom that comes with the process they sold him for 20 shekels of silver that's how that's how dangerous men can be when you put your trust in them for 20 shekels they sold their brother to slavery one of the things joseph learned is how the vanity of the coat of many colors compared to his gift ah no matter what you lose around you if you've not lost what is in you you didn't lose anything it's a lesson that joseph learned you can take the coat of many colors but if the anointing and the grace and the favor and the covenant and the relationship with god is still intact you've lost nothing job would learn that lesson too in his lifetime lost his children in one day lost his business lost his property but what was in him was greater than what was around him you need to learn that as you rise because our generation is so materialistic we think that our success is defined by the things around us when you're a man of god over a ministry like this and a crowd like this chances are that you tie your relevance to these external things the coat of many color can live within a split second your reputation can disappear within a split second your empire whatever it is that you think you tie your value to so that as you rise even if you enter the jeep you are not deceived by it because you know that they stole the coat of many colors in a moment they sold joseph 
when he got to Potiphar's house, he learned that the favor of God is the secret of thriving in any environment. Within a short time, the Bible says Potiphar gave him everything except his wife. The next lesson Joseph would learn is that it takes more than anointing to rise to the throne. It takes character. Here comes a beautiful woman coming to meet Joseph. Not a fellow slave girl. It would have been understandable. But when your august wife looks at you and wants a relationship with you, and she kept persuading him can you say no regardless of the consequences do you have the stamina to look at a system everybody is bribing and you know that saying no will cost you your job but you can say no it's a lesson you learn you don't learn it by impartation you learn it through experience Are we together? Hmm. Imagine the shame and the embarrassment. The public embarrassment Joseph would go through. And people would look at him and say, shameless slave. A slave was a property. You were never given room to explain yourself. And there, Joseph was in a prison. Watch this. I love the story of Joseph. It's a model to the journey of success. Joseph now suddenly becomes the top man in the prison and then he pays attention to two inferior people learning that the ones who hold the keys to your destiny may not be as flamboyant as you think the wine presser a weak man a cup bearer but they were doorkeepers in the spirit when you rise through the process with God you will learn not to trivialize people. All this committee of we, the intelligent ones, committee of us who our parents are millionaires, is the key to people's stagnation in life. Joseph looked at the countenance of the butler and the wine presser and discovered that something was wrong with them. And he stooped low to discuss their problems with them. Not knowing that the key to his own victory was also tied in helping them. Not helping himself helping them please hear me it is wise to not rush your life it is wise it is extreme wisdom to take life gradually you would think you are slow until you meet those who claim to have run ahead of you marking time because of pride and ignorance the Bible says, and Dotham prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Jesus spent 30 years preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. 30 years of a man's life devoted to accessing wisdom. One of my most inspiring scriptures in the Bible is, and Jesus grew. Everybody say, and Jesus grew. As powerful as Jesus is and was, he did not become, he grew. Only Adam came as an adult. Every other person grew. Grew. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. And this ministry grew. And this business grew. And koinonia grew. Now that's the language we hate in our generation. We hate small beginnings. We hate the embarrassment that comes with acknowledging the fact that you are starting. So we create things around our lives that lie about the reality of what we truly are because we think we are ashamed of it. No, I'm a pastor of 5,000 members. Whereas all that is in your church is 20 members. You are not proud of them. And you snap pictures of other ministries and put posters there because you do not know that the 20 people you call members are not members they are your future leaders but you have not learned that god never sends members he first sends leaders but they come as weak people like to the cave of adulam 
what have you learned that qualifies you to be a leader what have you learned it's not about biological age it is the staying power to go through the school of the spirit i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified there are many foolish people very foolish people and the reason is because they inherited most of what they gave them so a man labors and gives one million naira ten million naira to a foolish son who does not know the price and the power of discipline and diligence and so he will waste it away that was the mistake of the prodigal son the bible says he went he says father give me my inheritance the father must have been telling them do you know you have an inheritance so he said give me my inheritance sometimes when you get things too cheap too easy you don't value them when you get things too cheap too easy so certain times it's like the chastening of the lord he will pass you through certain processes not because he does not have the ability to fast track your life rushing you will destroy you isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you it says i have called you by name you are mine this is what it says when you pass through the waters i will be with you it says through the rivers it shall not overwhelm you and all of that then it says when you walk through the fire you don't run through fire you walk through it it must refine you there is a time appointed for training no amount of fasting will take you out you don't pray for that cup to pass you pray for grace to drink it not everything in the kingdom is a gift some things are rewards he said let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark there is a scar that will make demons run away they will not just run away because you think you are a new creation person this is the i think this is the balance we need to get in the body of christ we are so gift conscious we do not know that there are certain things that are products of growth there are realms and dimensions today no matter how open they are before me i know that my dealings with god has not authorized me yet to step into those dimensions no matter how open the door is i will decline it is the dealings of the spirit i had a foolish friend years ago who claimed he was led to organize a crusade in one of the stadiums in Zaria here and he came and spoke to me and said he will organize a crusade I told him I said let me even tell you I will say it in hiding I will never support you because there, you know it's amazing how we will do foolish things that are against the scripture but claim we had God and you know we live in a time where the moment you say God said everybody says that's your business no when when you say God said I can gauge your hearing is even in part so your interpretation is in part you can hear on the strength of certain levels of ignorance and think that was what god said and when you grow a little further you say my god so that thing i thought it was god was my mind people don't come and tell me god said and then i say oh that's all right no 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 god said god is not a genie he's not a charm there is a spiritual logic to the speakings of god The Bible says, woe unto any nation whose king is a child. A child there does not just talk of physical age necessarily. Because Joash was a king at age 8. Josiah was a king at age 9. Are we together? So it was not necessarily talking about biological age. But the timings of the dealings of the spirit. This is a word for many of us you need to suspend your hurry god is a god of speed not rush and the speed comes when you are well trained are we together i want to start business now and make and be a multi-millionaire in dollars in five months i want to start it is not about the money it is not about the anointing can you manage it there are many of us here right now we believe all it takes and let me use this and correct 
as many who are especially we young men of god here you know pastor most people think all there is to ministry is anointing the moment you can lay hands on somebody and it turns around you just get up and believe i wish if that were all to ministry i guarantee you no man of god will suffer have you not seen an anointed man sit down and cry elijah ran away from jezebel ran away and he and god said what are you doing here what am i doing here oh god they want to take off my head when moses was angry because of the stiff nakedness of 2.5 million people he struck the rock do you not know that the higher you rise the stricter the standard of god's dealings with you if you know that you will not be in a hurry to rise there are certain things other people will do and god will keep quiet as if he didn't see it you will do it he will deal with you ruthlessly hallelujah have you learned how to manage rejection have you been disappointed have you learned how to comfort yourself in the midst of pain have you learned how to navigate your way when there are no answers to your prayer when you are typing and nothing is happening when you are giving and nothing is happening do you know the spiritual key to apply when things are going wrong otherwise what will you tell the members when your members come and say pastor you prophesied during our five week of prophecy program my husband died my wife died i lost my job and you name the program five weeks of prophecy and lifting and then you are confused because the more you prophesy the more they died how do you manage that situation i'm challenging us it's called the law of process do you know there was a time in my life i asked god questions because of the pain and the challenges in my life god never said anything let me tell you something with god you can go through so much pain you will prophesy someone's solution and never hear your own solution from god he will you will finish fasting over something and god will not answer you as soon as someone else comes then the gift begins to flow you solve their problem and they think you are enjoying you close the door and god says let's continue Hmm. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, do you know there was a time in my life? I think I stretched my faith and did something, and someone transferred 30,000. I remember clearly. That I was so happy watching my faith work. Do you know as soon as that money landed, God didn't even allow me to breathe. He said I should empty like that. No tight. I should just carry it and transfer. I felt like dying. I said, oh, come on God. You can't do this. Hallelujah. The day you buy something precious, then God will ask you to go and give it to someone you don't like. God will ask you to stand up in the night and walk around. You will think you are going to see something. You will walk around for two hours. Nothing will happen. You say, go back and sleep. God, so what was it about? It's a training. It's not what you are doing as much as obedience. Building obedience. A time will come as a man of God. It's just beautiful ladies that will be coming for counseling. Non-stop. Four, five months. Mm, you have entered another lecture. You never knew you can like ladies till you cancel another ah, in Jesus' name. Ah, me, no, I, I bind you will bind and cast. I know you are laughing, but I'm showing you how God works. A time will come, you are a multi millionaire, but everywhere will be closed. God will give you stringent instructions, so everything, and then He will leave you alone. I tell you, you will fast and pray and cry and nobody will answer all of a sudden your heavens are closed not by demons it's a training you will fast and cry i know what i'm telling you nothing will happen a time will come it's like all hell will break through your life you will be misunderstood by everybody 
and you'll be is there something wrong with me nothing is wrong with you god can you arise and god will keep quiet your ego will be so strong you are praying and your hands are vibrating and god says it's the healing anointing you come out and disgrace yourself in the public everybody you laid your hands on was not healed yet you had the gods to tell everybody a healing anointing just landed and at the end somebody will confront you and say pastor please humble yourself and go and get the real thing you go back to god and god will say i gave it to you then when your ego is strong and it's no longer about your reputation and you say whether i lay hands on the whether you are healed or not i am already dead my i don't have any reputation again then the wheelchair will rise this god i'm telling you that's how he trains people this thing i'm telling you is deeper than you are just hearing it it looks like discussion it's easier said than done i'm explaining to many of you some seasons you are in right now where you are in a season with god everybody is moving and god will say you wait God, what is all? What did I do wrong? Nothing. Am I waiting because of unbelief? You say no. It's even because you are the finest of them. That's why I'm waiting. That's why there's no Gary in my room. Do you have the stamina to qualify yourself for the hand of God, brothers and sisters? It is in that dark period that you will lift up your voice with tears in your eyes you say lord you know what i have made up my mind that result or no result i will praise you i will sing i will praise even in my darkest time through the sorrow and the pain i will sing and i will praise I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. Just when you thought you were graduating, you check the final results and you see three carryovers, one full session. <sighs> Lord, I thought by September I would start the ministry after graduating by July now i'm waiting one more year first you try and apply faith you will write all the courses and pour communion on it and go and burn it and do every gymnastic and at the end of it you'll find out that you have to come to terms with the reality but brothers and sisters i bring you a word of hope the same grave where people die is where resurrection starts mm when you see a man anointed it's a measure of how much he has died it's not a measure of how much he has met people no sir no sir you want to speak and things happen it's not just about chasing men of god for impartation there is a track record please hear what i'm telling you it's a track record there are many men of God trying to look for wealthy people to come to their church. You don't look for them. Your pain is a language. It calls people. Are we together? The question I have for all of us is, what have you learned that you think qualifies you for the next level you so admire? What have you learned? Lord, I want a prophetic grace so that when I see people, I can call their names. It's obtainable. But are you willing to pass through? They came and asked Jesus. They said, can you grant the mother of James and John that my sons will sit one at your left and one at your right? Jesus did not say it's impossible. He gave the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Hallelujah. When I sat down here, I held Ejimi's hands and I spoke a word to him. I said, Ejimi, we have been helped of the Lord. That's what I told him. I remember our first crusade. That is a, the car spoiled by three o'clock. We were on the road. Crusade will start five o'clock. But the car had spoiled. Everything to raise is not that we could not 
It's not that cars finished. There was no money. There was no wisdom. There was no nothing. There was anointing. We got to the crusade ground and our ladies then, there were few ladies. They were part of the welfare department. They were still in the worship team. They were still part of the counselors. Our ladies climbed trees to plug firewood. Ladies, not men. They climbed trees to plug firewood. To prepare food fast before we rush to the crusade ground. Then they will quickly take their bath and be part of the worship team. We were not plenty then. So when we call the sick out, you will go to a sick body one by one. It's not this general one that will say, if you are healed, come out. Everything you were taught will, will work there. And you know some of those women, if they are not healed, they will tell you they are not healed. It's not young people who will say, okay, let me just pity you. Ah, is there pain? Yes, it's still there. Do you know it was a miracle how we paid for where our auditorium was? We returned back. They were almost locking me up because of 150,000 naira. I couldn't afford it for the sound. I prayed. I fasted. I sowed seeds. I was waiting for my scholarship to come. Let me pay everything with it. It was not up to that. And several things. And after that pain, six months of untold pain, the Lord spoke to me and said, next year you are going there again. That's God for you. This is, that's his voice. These are the kind of voices that you know you don't need confirmation. It is God. So then death works in us. That life will work in you. He brings you to a point where much more than the gift, he captures your heart. That's where he's going with all this journey. He brings you to a point where much more than the word of knowledge, much more than the flamboyancy. Please, I'm speaking to you. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare with you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Are you willing to pass through? We are celebrating a group of men and women who have spent seven months of intense training through the rain. Their egos have been stung. I rebuke them. I challenge them. I watched their failures and their flaws how God began to build them some of them started some of them could not endure for various reasons but these ones have finished to the end he says better is the end of a thing now today you watch them they are even watching themselves surprised by what God has done don't envy results seek to know the process seek to know the process Hallelujah. Let me tell you a humorous story. Hey, Jimmy, come. He would have forgotten. I remember years ago, I love him by the way, so much. We've come a long way. I remember a time when I used to pray for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he used to wonder how it would happen. So one time, I think a lady came from somewhere. There's a corner we take them to and pray. And he spoke to her. I mean, Ed is a good teacher, you know. He gave a, an excellent exegesis of scripture. Now was the time for the demonstration. I mean, everything was done and he laid hands and did everything. And this lady would not receive. I remember we were going back home. He pained him. He took it personal. He said, Abba, even God, that if that lady fell down, he knows what would have happened to her faith. And yet God didn't see anything. So when you watch him today, just stand and he's talking and somebody's jumping and flying from a chair outside. It's a long journey. Do not want a man's glory till you hear the story. Behind every glory, there is a story. God bless you, sir. Honor you. Hallelujah. 
some of you let me tell you when others are running to make money god will say they don't know what they are doing stay back for three years you may not even be worth one hundred thousand, but god is going to be working on you and you will get up in one year and make what others cannot make in a lifetime don't rush when he asks you to stay if it is god please stay there is power in waiting on god we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait and sisters there is power in process holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence holy spirit you are welcome welcome into my life to pass me through the process virtuous ladies may be getting married but God will say you I know you are beautiful but wait God why now eh? my parents want children they are telling me they want to see their grandchildren God will say the problem is one child that you'll be having will be equivalent to a nation I must train you you are not training a human being you are training a system so while others are moving I am saying wait but can you wait and it's not like you are waiting he will drive all the men good men will keep coming and he will say wait let me tell you waiting is the hardest is the surest proof of maturity not praying not fasting waiting especially when god does not give you any reason wait others are buying cars he will say wait I'm showing you a message you don't hear in church again. There is power in waiting. My first scholarship that I got, remember years ago, I got that scholarship. That time there was no GTB in Zaria. The scholarship came through Guarantee Trust Bank. There was no Guarantee Trust Bank in Zaria. You had, and even in Kaduna, there was only one, just one. One GTB, no branch, just one. You would travel and go there. I remember when I collected it, I was so happy. And the Lord asked me to sow everything. I thought that would be the only time. Then, ah. may God find you so malleable. May God find you so, so non-resistant. He says, the wind blew it where it listeth. You cannot tell where it is coming or where is going I remember you know I was preparing happy 2010 hoping that you know at least we've served God diligently for a number of years and at least maybe relocate somewhere and you know start a greater level of work there and all of that I remember September 2010 the anointing of God I was minding my business and the power of God came upon me and he said I need to talk to you immediately and that was it I went for a retreat and the Lord told me you are starting something that koinonia I told you about is about to start and it will start in this city I say ah God this city again have I not tried this city that's what God said and then I began to see the overflows in the visions that the Lord told me and I began to see all these things. I saw people coming. The Lord said, this thing will make Zaria become like a place of pilgrimage. I saw those things. But I believed. As stupid as I was, believed. As childlike as it was, believed. And to God be the glory, great things he has done. Can you stay with God tonight and say, Lord, I'm no longer in a rush this craze to prove to people I'm successful. Uh -uh. Let me be qualified based on your standard 
and I know you will back me. All this hurry, hurry in life is going to destroy us. Please hear what I'm telling you. There is power in process. Some of you, what you need to do now is not to open a church. What you need to do is to submit yourself to mentorship and dealing. Go and buy books, buy videos. I know you are anointed. They, you were a co-guest minister in a crusade, but sit down. The whistle has not yet been blown to go. Don't qualify yourself based on your results. You qualify yourself based on the word from God. The law of process. It's a simple charge. We are going to pray. Two prayer points from the depth of our hearts. Number one, you are going to say, Lord, I am tired of this life of pressure and hurrying to prove that I'm successful. I'm ready to follow at your pace. Lift your voice and pray. I'm ready to follow on with your pace. Are you praying? Lead me, Lord, and I will run after you. If you lead me, Lord, I will run after you. Lead me on and I will run after you. Lead me, Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, I am ready to be led. I am ready to be led. Society will not put pressure on me. I reject the pressure that comes with society. The pressure to prove I am prosperous. The pressure to prove I am fruitful. The pressure to prove I am mature. The pressure to prove I am intelligent. No, no, no. I move at your pace. I move at your pace. I subscribe to your training. I subscribe to your dealing. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I refuse to succumb to pressure. No, no, pressure will not destroy my life. I will not allow friends, I will not allow my peers to push me into seasons that are not yet ordained of God. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait for the anointing. I will wait for prosperity. I will wait for wisdom. I will pass through it. I will pass through it unashamedly. I will pass through it. It may be painful, but I will pass through it. I'm rounding up. The Bible is full of people who misuse anointings, full of people who misuse honor, full of people who misuse power, full of people who misuse grace because they did not stay well in the school of the spirit. They hurried themselves out. They graduated themselves. Every class in the school of the spirit will be tested when you go out you don't miss lectures and go scot free it's not like physical education that you can read up for exams every lecture every class on character on holiness on power on self-control on managing success on endurance you need the full training there is no dealing of god that is what jumping away let me tell you something even if you are 30 years in ministry if you are ready to walk with god you will go back to those classes and finish those classes you missed there is no double promotion with god you must pass through lecture after lecture and when he has tried me i shall come out as gold and when he has tried me, I will be like a trophy. I shall come out as gold. If these things be in you and abide in you, then you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful. 
Will you lead me, Lord? And I will run after you. Listen, I told God something in my life. I said, Lord, any door you cannot open for me, let it remain closed for the rest of my life. I have entered a covenant with myself. Any door that His Majesty cannot open for me, let it remain closed. Listen, let God take away your ego and your reputation. This issue of my name, my reputation is at stake. Who gave you the reputation? Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I live in the flesh, that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You don't carry power with reputation. You must die to yourself. Die to your ego. Oh, my reputation. If members don't come, what will I tell people? If my church is not growing, what will I tell people? No. If after three years, I don't have a child, what will I tell people? No, you get to a point where you say, Lord, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. I have no relevance outside of you. Aha. That's the state you will see the power of God. Prayer point number two. Father, anoint me in such a way and in such a degree that when it's time for me to rise, the nations will see your glory upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. It's all for his glory, brothers and sisters. All of this that we do is for his glory. All that we do is for his glory. It's all about you. Pray. Jesus, and all this is for you, it's for your glory and your fame, it's not about me, as if you should do things my way, you alone are God. Lord, it's all about you. Jesus, all this is for you. Believe me, that's why we do what we do. For your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. Let me give us a third prayer point. Oh God, be glorified in my life. Let this quest to outshine people, let this quest to be a superstar die in my life, that I may decrease, oh God, that when men see me, they see Jesus and him lifted, that when men see the miracles, the wisdom, the power, I want them to see Jesus. To see nothing I will not give you. That was the condition he gave me. Just let men see me. Over 70% of people who have been blessed by this ministry don't know my face. They don't even know how I look. And frankly speaking for me, it's a thing of joy. Oh, that I may decrease. 
that the one who sent me will be the one to increase. I'm speaking to you. This already is a prophetic word for someone who is hoping to climb the ladder and be a celebrity. You will never find grace that way. That you be lifted. That you be lifted. John 17, verse 1. Jesus spoke and said, Father, the hour has come. He said, Glorify thy son, that thy son may bring you glory. The only reason why you glorify Koinonia is that Koinonia will bring you glory. Not a name for Joshua Selman. How long do I have to live in this life to make a name for myself? that attitude there are many young ministers with this confusing attitude this competitive spirit wanting to build an empire i am a millionaire i am anointed is garbage when christ is lifted there is no limit to the hand of the holy ghost upon your life when christ is lifted there is no limit to how far he will take you he will open the two lift gates of nations and give you people's prayer points as a gift because he will be glorified. The source of my strength, now you. The strength of my life, now you. My hope and my joy. My confidence. You're the source of my strength. You're the strength of my life. Jesus grant us the grace that only seeks to see you lifted that if at all you ever lift us let it simply be that you are giving yourself an opportunity to be known we bless your name in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated be seated quickly Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, we're getting into the graduation formality proper. And um, we'll just take the order. we we'll have some of our fathers coming to give us a word of encouragement. And then um, we ask that you please be patient with us and follow on with us before i clear the stage for one of our father to just come and briefly just encourage the students just a word of advice or so to challenge them i want us to please and please honor the um, chairman of the governing council of christ gospel church <laughs> pastor abubakar let's honor him thank you sir thank you so much Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His wife is also graduating. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I, I want to honor the resident pastor, this great church, Pastor Tula. God bless you. Bless you, daddy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I just want to honor our daddy, Prof. Professor J.S. Murray. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. We're still going to honor some more people, but these uh, ministers, because they'll be performing the function, praise the Lord. 
I will clear the way for Pastor Tula. Pastor Tula is going to come up and he's going to just give a word of advice. And please, I want you to listen. Everyone is applicable. But then specifically for the School of Ministry students, I want you to pay attention and listen. God bless you. God honor you, sir. Hallelujah. Please, can we put that hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Just want to congratulate the graduating student. I think I was here at the first graduation, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the fourth one. I want to thank God for what I'm seeing. Young men and women finding their place in life and also living according to God's purpose for their life. I think you will quite agree with me that um, I'm a little bit of hate. And if you ask me what is giving me joy in my life, I will frankly tell you that my joy is that I have discovered Jesus in my life and I'm serving him and not because of what I will gain from him but because of what he has done for me and I'm willing to serve him the more so I want to encourage you that what you have found what you have passed through guided with all jealousy the Lord will see you through in the name of Jesus walk with a God trust him in every aspect of your life he has never failed me and I believe he will never fail you in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus is everything to you Jesus is all that you need and you will definitely succeed in the ministry in the name of Jesus. Well, I used to tell people that um, it's not my work, it's God's work. And he that has called you into this ministry, he will back you up. You will never be disgraced in life in the name of Jesus. You will never quit in the name of Jesus. The more it becomes tougher, the more it will become more interesting for you to forge ahead in the name of Jesus I pray for you that the hand of the Lord will be upon you in the name of Jesus you will excel the life and ministry in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for the opportunity to come thank you for the opportunity to be part of this blessing the Lord will see you through in Jesus name I also wish to thank my I call it he is my mentor hallelujah I said hallelujah. I really recognize the grace of God upon his life. Apostle Salman. I really pray that God Almighty Father will continue to increase us. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 I think I've been in a room with this many good looking people. If you're happy that God has brought you thus far, School of Ministry graduates, hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. It's your day. It's your day. It's your day. Um, wow. Um, I celebrate every one of you because lately. God has been taking me through, God has been teaching me on the body of Christ and the, the beautiful organization called this body of Christ. I was in um, Pastor Alpha's house um, last week over the weekend, myself, my wife, um, Aaron's wife, and we had a swell time in his house. And we're just talking and encouraging ourselves with regard to the body of Christ and the beautiful thing that God is doing. And I want to speak specifically to the School of Ministry graduates. And I will speak from my heart. 
I'll speak from my heart. Um, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 speaks about us offering our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. How that that is our reasonable act of worship. But verse 2 says that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but you should be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I thank God because when many people wake up to start serving God, they just assume that God is happy with their current state of mind. <laughs> and they serve him with their current state of mind. But he clearly asks us that before you begin to present your bodies, there must first be a mental transformation. Please, every paradigm shift that has occurred, ensure, ensure that you do not go back to thinking the way you were thinking. You know, it's been, it's been seven months of back-to-back -back interaction and interacting with people of like minds. You understand? Please, as much as is possible, as you, as you stop the frequency of interaction one with another, ensure that the paradigm shift you do not let go. Amen. I'm saying this because as you start to serve God in a greater capacity, it is what you can believe in your mind that you will receive from the Lord. And I'm saying this because I am greatly excited. One other thing that I would like to say, um, someone was in my house the other day and I was, I was charging him. I found something very interesting about the body of Christ. Apostle normally speaks about things we receive for personal growth and he speaks about things we receive for kingdom advancement. Let me tell you something that I have personally learned from his life. Number one was he found out what God wanted him to do with his life early. And he didn't rush to begin to deploy it. He first developed it. I want to say categorically that even as you live, that thing that God has uniquely revealed to you for the sake of the body of Christ, hold on to it. Develop immense capacity in it. What has been done here is a function of the pressing of apostle and he has allowed you to stand on his shoulders, but you will still press. So that thing God has uniquely given to you, whatever it is, it's a unique grace you are supposed to supply to the body of Christ and eventually the world at last. Grow unparalleled mastery in it and represent it to the body of Christ. For some of you, it's finances. Some of you, in the course of the training, you've come to see that God has raised you for that. For others, it's family life. For others, it is the ability to enforce the supernatural power and counsel of God. Whatever it is, build capacity in it. One of the reasons that I think God has, amongst many things, God has blessed him with is that clarity of purpose and that clarity of vision. He doesn't do too many things, but the things he does, he does them exceptionally well. Don't spread yourself thin. That unique grace God has given you to represent. When you represent Christ, it means a dimension of Christ was presented to you and you now want to represent that dimension to the body of Christ and the world at large, whatever it is. Amen. As you live, say, Lord, I own this fair. You have made me a king in this kingdom. You are coming back as king of kings. I want to dominate in this fair. For some of you, it's family life. For some of you, it's relationships. For some of you, it's, it may not even look so spiritual. For some of you, as he was talking certain dreams, education, whatever it is, as long as it is something that is present in heaven, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say, Lord, as long as I live and I breathe, I will represent this reality to the body of Christ. I will be a walking embodiment of this reality to the body of Christ. The third thing I would like to say is that you, you should, as you live, pace yourselves in the sense that those that you have identified that, that carry similar graces, let that fellowship continue. School of ministry might have ended, but you may have noticed a few of your own brethren. Let that fellowship continue. Amen. These are the three things that I would like to say to you and to encourage you. And for those of you who didn't have the privilege or the ability or the stamina to go through the school of ministry, look at them very well. God has given them something for you. Amen. Amen. They have been trained. When you train soldiers, what do you do next? They go to the battlefield. Please ensure that the grace of God that God has given unto them 
whatever thing they have learned, that depth of revelation and understanding and impartation, they didn't receive it for themselves. They received it for your benefit. Amen. So make sure you place a demand on what God has done in their lives in this last seven months. So I celebrate you because the devil is about to receive the heat. <laughs> the heat from your training. <laughs> and the world will not recover from the great and the mighty things that God is going to do in and through you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Um, I want to honor our mother, Mrs. Juliet Alozier, the proprietor of God's Time Secondary School. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for honoring this time. Um, Professor Madam Ladi, God bless you, ma. <laughs> Hallelujah. And every other person that is um, beyond our reach, when we're aware of your being here, we will honor you appropriately. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Please, let's hurry up. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Oh, I thought it was projected. Let me use my notebook. Second Timothy chapter two and verse two. I read and it says. And the things that thou hast heard from me among many witnesses. It says, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And the things that thou hast heard from me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who will commit it to others. This is the fourth set. We are graduating the fourth set of the school of ministry. And we are happy God has been faithful. God gave us a mandate to raise and train kingdom ambassadors that will transform the world. And um, we have been helped of the Lord. And I'll just run through a few things I'll ask that we pay attention, especially for the students. Praise God. Now, the motivation behind the ENI School of Ministry is to raise kingdom ambassadors to transform the world. And this um, is by employing the principles of education, mentorship, and impartation to equip men and women who will become kingdom ambassadors. So there are three um, strategies that we use to be able to produce our students. Number one is education. That means the supply of superior time-tested information that is aimed at upgrading the understanding and the paradigms of the student. The first strategy is to give them new information, superior time-tested information. We believe in education and its power to bring transformation. So that's the first key. The second key is mentorship. Mentorship here talks of the wisdom, the alignment, and the transformation from men and women of world-class standards, repute, and results aimed at helping the students to be confident and certain and also giving them worthy references and benchmarks one of the importance of mentorship is that it gives you a reference point it gives you a benchmark upon which you can gauge your progress and challenge yourself in the same so we believe in mentorship and um, we employ that principle as we seek to produce this caliber of ambassadors Number three, and um, I think it's one of the things that we'll be going into shortly, is impartation. The third key is impartation. I wrote down something little here that I want us to pay attention to. It takes more than adopting a great and superior ideology.
to make impact into this world. It will certainly require more than a transformed mindset as an ambassador of the kingdom to thrive and establish the purposes of the kingdom in a world whose values and perceptions are largely anti-Christ. And um, this is very important. You must realize that it takes more than a transformed mind. Ejimi spoke so gracefully about the power of a transformed mind and it has become an anthem in this place how that a man cannot rise above and beyond his mindset and his ideology. However, to be able to occupy your, your space in every strata of human activities, and I mentioned them, number one, religion, politics and governance, education, arts and entertainment, family life, media, and the one mountain that finances them all, business and finance. These are the seven mountains that represent the controlling powers. They are the mountains or the spheres of influence that create and influence civilization. And God is seeking for men and women to occupy this. Uh, by the way, let me just emphasize the fact that the school of ministry is not a pastor school. There is a difference between a pastor and a kingdom ambassador. Are we together? The kingdom ambassadors are raised to be able to represent the kingdom and the purposes of the kingdom in every strata of human activities. And so every of these strata of human activities is influenced by people, listen, and systems that are openly against the gospel and the advancement of God's kingdom. Every one of these mountains that I listed have people, men and women of influence whose lives and ideologies are largely antichrist. So the church already has a challenge by default to contend against these controlling powers and these systems that will want to sabotage the purposes of the kingdom. More so, the reality of the spirit realm alongside its influence on our lives and culture cannot be denied. I'm establishing the premise upon which the anointing and impartation should be needed. Thus, there must be, in addition to a transformed mind, a spiritual advantage, an edge that lifts believers above the limitations and the vicissitudes that are associated with this system. This edge is the mystery that the Bible calls the anointing. The anointing is a seal of authorization, a divine ability upon a vessel, a man, that grants him or her the ability to manifest supernatural results. This is where impartation comes in. Impartation, listen, is God's system for the transference and the upgrading of his power upon a man's life. Tonight's impartation upon the School of Ministry students will, among other benefits, release upon them certain dimensions and operations of the Spirit. It is therefore my admonition that we all stand in faith with them through this most spiritual process. There are five dimensions and I gave it to them yesterday to pray over. There are five dimensions of graces that we trust God to be at work from today in the life of the School of Ministry students. Number one is the grace for unusual access to encounters and the manifestation of God's presence. Number two is the spirit of wisdom. Number three is the grace for miracles, signs, and wonders. And this, this is not limited to healing miracles, miracles, supernatural results in every sphere that they would find themselves. The fourth dimension that we trust that would be at work in their life is supernatural influence and access. I call it the gift of men. There is a mystery of influence and access. And lastly, an impartation for kingdom wealth, prosperity and abundance. So these five dimensions is what our students will be receiving. They have passed through successfully. They've gone through the rigor of their assessments, the practicum, and ultimately the exam. And every one of them uh, has been able to demonstrate that they are worthy to receive this impartation. It's been 
intense sessions of training and building. And um, as we perform this function, I want that our hearts be opened and let's stand in faith with them. And then we'll do this very quickly and um, we'll carry out other things and we'll be done. Praise God. Let me ask all the students to stand up, please. Let's celebrate them as they stand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. You have been trained, you have been built, and now something remarkable is coming upon your life. You've heard me say it again and again, and I've said it in the house, that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. As much as the transforming power of God is at work in and through my life, I cannot deny that the possibilities that God has been able to grant in ministry and other spheres of life have been largely a product of His anointing, a product of His grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so as we lead them through this impartation session, I'd like your heart to be very open. Hands will be laid on them, every one of them. And um, I will prophesy and speak over their lives. We'll do this very, very fast. And then we'll perform other functions. I want everyone seated and those outside and those online, just stretch your hands towards their direction and begin to speak. Say, Father, they are stepping into a new season of grace. Pray for them. You are stretching your hands. a large number of people and so I think we'll just take it row by row okay all other things I can minister to you while on your seat so hold on please hold on we'll take it row by row and if they're under the anointing you just keep them somewhere ladies and gentlemen I want you as we have discussed to open up your heart you have received several impartations but this that you are receiving is an anointing that will do strange things in your life Hallelujah. Father, thank you because you are the one who anoints men. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Father, we lift up this oil. This is ordinary oil, but I lift it up. Let it lose its earthly significance as normal oil and become a mystery and a conduit for impartation. That which you have committed upon my life, that which you have put upon this ministry. Lord, let it freely fall upon your people. Let today be a strange day in their lives that they begin to walk in several possibilities. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am not this by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that this will be an instrument of impartation. Every grace that we have spoken over, let it come upon this oil in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's, let's pray in the Spirit. Let's pray in the Spirit.
Hallelujah. I want to pray and prophesy to them now. The anointing of the Spirit is upon me. Now this will apply to everybody too. But I want you to remain seated, just the students. I stand in the name of Jesus. Under this apostolic and prophetic grace, I stretch my hands. Wisdom, take it. Take it. Take it. Now, step into that level of wisdom. Take it. Grace. Grace. Wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, may no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. The God that has risen for me in my life, may he rise for you. May he rise for you. Anyone that fights you, may the covenant I have with God fight them. I say it again. Any mortal man that fights you is not your fate. May the covenant I have with God fight them. It will fight them in the secret. It will fight them in the open. Everywhere you go from today, the grace to be the head, receive it. Receive it. Kapataya. Help them. The grace to be the head. Receive it. I stand in the name of Jesus and I open for you the two lift gates. May kings come to you. I command it. The gift of men. Strange access. Access to men and their treasures. He told Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profit may appear unto all. I prophesy from today results in your life. Strange results. Lift your hands, every one of you. I pray for you. A dimension of the healing grace that you have never seen in your life. I stretch my hands upon you. Take it now. It's yours. Take it. Take it now. Strange healing grace is happening to people inside and outside too. You don't have to be part of them. I release that grace. Freely, freely. Let it be yours. Hallelujah. One of the graces that we have enjoyed in this ministry is on common access to men. May that mantle of influence and honor, may it come upon your life from today. 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 I speak over your life from today everywhere you go may the anointing of the Holy Ghost follow you men will wonder and say is Saul also one of the prophets every dormant gift in your spirit I activate it right now by the power of prophecy creativity business acumen excellence in ministry leadership You will not need to tell anyone you are a graduate of the school of ministry. May there be a sign on your life that cannot be denied. A sign in your life. I pray for you. The mystery of wealth and prosperity. I invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies. From today, step into the wealthy place. Step into the wealthy place. Hear me. Listen. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the grace to speak things and see them come to pass from today may it work in your life.
the kind of favor you have never seen in your life before one favor finishes another one starting may it be yours from tonight as you walk around may the gates of hell shake and tremble whether in business whether in ministry whether in your corporate life may your life become a perpetual threat to the devil let me give you a few scriptures specifically for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb I don't know how you will motivate yourself tonight but believe God believe God believe God Deuteronomy 7 verse 14 please help us media let's be very fast there's a lot to do tonight Deuteronomy 7 verse 14 Deuteronomy 7 verse 14 I want you to read it please if you're a child of God read it loud one to read thou shalt be blessed above all people uh -huh. there shall not be male or female barren among you or your what the only people obeying this scripture are animals the only sets of people obeying this scripture are animals they don't pray they don't fast they give birth anyhow anywhere under any condition any condition it says thou shall be blessed above all people there shall not be male or female men can be barren women can be barren pastors can be barren parents can be barren families can be barren territories and nations can be barren hallelujah are we together now and then it says there shall not be male or female barren among you that means if you are experiencing any form of barrenness it cannot be god i'm giving you reason to attack this thing as from the devil do not create any theology under any circumstance to justify barrenness of any sort don't be embarrassed by it but summon the courage tonight to call it what it is and face it squarely Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127, please. Verse 3 to 5, very quickly. It says, Lo, read it, please. Children are what? Um, this scripture. It's a very powerful scripture. It never said children come from men. The seed that gives them bodies come from men. But children are a heritage from the Lord. Read on please. We're not done media. It says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are the children that are giving birth to early so are the children that are giving birth to early you are it's not just the children of your youth there is something about youthfulness and giving birth even biologically without any sense of insult but even biologically we understand that when a woman has stayed so long and it's about to give to, to give birth there there are certain kinds of sicknesses and imperfections and deformities that may likely happen like down syndrome and so on and so forth the bible talks about the children of your youth verse 5 happy is the man whose quiver is what i don't know about you but I don't believe in having only one child because two is at least the number of witness and there are certain things that only happen when two or three ah come on now i'm preaching to somebody go ahead respect your ideology but the more you know god the more you become a believer hallelujah happy he didn't say sad 
Children can make men happy. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I have met wealthy people who the only thing they pray for is a child. Are we together? They will pay any amount. They will go any length. They just need a child. Not prosperity, not a job. Happy is the man that his quiver is full of them. He says they shall not be. Society has an ugly way of stigmatizing people. In every area of barrenness, but especially on fruitfulness. Especially in Nigeria. The average time they give you is two weeks. Once you are married, people are, uh, it's ladies that first start. They look at the signs, they look at your face. The men don't know, they don't care. To, they will catch up later after four or five months. I mean, but the women, they're already looking. And then after two months, someone will confront you and say jokes. Ah, when is Junior coming? Now, you think it's a joke. After a few months, they won't laugh about it when they are saying it again. We live in a society, especially Africa. After nine months, if you cannot give birth to a child, your persecution starts immediately. Are we together? And then I'm still surprised that with the age of knowledge and intelligence, we still have all kinds of people, you know, driven by culture and all of these cultural ideologies. Oh, I married a witch. That's the reason why I'm not giving birth and all of that and so on and so forth. If the man, your seed is required for the woman and she's a witch. What are you? For it not working. You see that? We victimize women shamefully. And then we think, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is a stupid woman that I got married to. No, no. Listen, listen. Barrenness is an entirely spiritual thing. Forget about the medical report you came with. I am telling you the origin of barrenness. The, see, barrenness, fibroid, and all kinds of demonic operations, they are related. It's the same system that brought them. Listen to me. Fibroid is an attempt to mimic a child between you and a spirit. Fibroid is not just an object growing is growing at a pace that is not consistent with your normal body growth meaning another life is sponsoring it are we together now yeah so you have a woman get pregnant she's rejoicing hallelujah glory be to god the moment the doctor announces she goes to bed in the night and all kinds of strangers depending on what episode a man a woman all kinds of people come and the next thing the woman has lost the pregnancy and while people are insulting her because we live in a society that that who, whose conscience has been so numbed we can insult people without finding what is going on the cure for barrenness is not counseling counseling does not drive out demons Fibroid is real. You can feel it. It can destroy you. Impotency is real. Whether you believe it or not. And do you know. This affects Christians more. Because we are guided by certain principles until marriage. So there is no room to ordinarily find out what is wrong with you. You just marry and get the shock immediately. That, that quest for obedience prepared the healthy environment for Satan to manifest it. But the devil is a liar tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I once prayed for a woman who said she would be sitting down. God is my witness. And physically, pastor, physically, physically, feel a man come to her as though sleeping with her. I'm, I don't mean in a, in a vision. Wide awake any time of the day. That stranger just comes. Claiming legal rights and holds over God's people and stopping them for years. Let me tell you another thing with barrenness. It does not live by itself. Any kind of barrenness. One day, my miracle will come. It's not a wise approach. Not with barrenness. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You've got to get up and say today, 
today is the day. One day is, it, it looks like a consolation, but you never receive results from it. One day I know I will build that house. One day I know, how about, is it not turn by turn? There are all kinds of wise sayings. Life is turn by turn. Are you joking? There are some people who died, their turn never came. You force your turn. Brothers and sisters, this thing is by force. You force your turn. You force your turn. Time and chance happens to all. He didn't say they receive it. It just says, in God's equation, he made provision for everyone to have it. As I'm speaking to you, I'm very angry in my spirit. Because some things must change this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know families who have spent millions, literally, looking for the fruit of the womb. I know families who have been depressed. At all kinds of things. Do you know the one that pains me more? When a pastor becomes barren. That, 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 one, that one gets to me. It's, it's personal. You know why? Because Satan is like putting a billboard on the man's life. I am at work. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's very painful. It's very painful. I've had the privilege of meeting men of God in different places. And they are one prayer. They come to me in the secret and they cry. They say, man of God, I lay my hands on others. They come back with twins. They come back with this. But I've not been able to have a child. And we have members whose mouths don't keep quiet. We run our mouths around with different episodes of what we think might be the explanation supporting the barrenness. Rather than taking it personal and go to God and say, no Lord, something must be done. Do you know what Abraham would have gone through? 25 years barrenness. Hallelujah. How about other aspects of barrenness? The inability for you to produce results in ministry. To the point that you are now doubting whether you are called or not. Are we together now? You used to shout before and say, I know God called me. But after two years with seven members alone. You're already keeping quiet now and say the most important thing is I'm obeying. You, you see, let me tell you, lack of result makes you to hide certain convictions. You will be forced to hide them. That's how Satan stops people. He doesn't shut your mouth. He stops the area of results. But we are going to pray. Listen, tonight I don't want you to feel embarrassed about confronting anything that is barrenness in your life. Are we together now? We are a family of faith and we are going to cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open a door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. There are pastors who are supposed to be at a level. They, they are doing everything scripturally. That should bring the kind of results they want. And yet nothing is working. Absolutely nothing is working. No ministry. People come receive miracles and go. All kinds of things happen. One day my result will come. It's a deception from hell. I'm telling you this again. You must insist and say, I make that one day today. Psalm 113 verse 9. Psalm 113 verse 9. Please help us media. Psalm 113 verse 9. This is what will be somebody's story after this miracle service. It says, he make it. Who makes it? Ah! And we're standing here only because you may. He make it so God can make it happen. It is within his power to make it happen. He make it the barren woman to keep house. And then he says to be a joyful mother of what? The only reason why you should stop giving birth is mutual understanding between you and your wife. Not a situation that has pegged you and saying that child will not come. No. A joyful mother. A joyful mother of children. A joyful mother of children. One last scripture. 
Exodus 23 verse 26. Exodus 23 verse 26. I like you to read it. One to read. There shall nothing cast her young, nor be barren in thy land. It didn't say there shall no one. It said nothing. Nothing. Do you know your money can be barren? Many other things in your life can be barren. It says there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get angry. To know that every trace of barrenness, regardless of how it appears, is of the devil and must be dealt with as such. Three keys to fruitfulness, very quickly. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you three keys very quickly to fruitfulness the first key is to treat fruitfulness as a command have an understanding that fruitfulness is not an opinion it's not an opinion that is left to your personal desire. Fruitfulness is a command. Fruitfulness is a command. Genesis 1.28 Fruitfulness is a command. Anything that is not fruitful in your life is causing your life to be disobedient towards the word of God. Anything anything the moment you see your life not producing result in any aspect there is a spirit forcing your life to reflect obedience disobedience fruitfulness is a command barrenness is an attempt to make you violate that command number two the second key to fruitfulness is that obedience to kingdom principles will deliver the desired result it's not enough to have the understanding that is a command there are principles that compel your partnership with the word of god in order to get that result principles scattered through scripture are several principles that are responsible for certain manifestations of god's grace in our lives are we together Praise God. Are we together now? Sorry about that. Obedience to kingdom principles will deliver desired result. Listen, please. Wishing and crying helps you, but it does not help your situation. Are we together now? God is moved by your tears, but he only responds to his word. He's moved by your tears. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But for results to happen in your life, you must activate the word. The woman with the issue of blood had been crying, but nothing happened. But she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Obedience to kingdom principles. For instance, when it comes to finances, your tithe, your giving, kingdom investments and the opportunity and the platform to provide value remain the irrefutable keys to wealth and abundance there is no theology around it are we together there is no magic and mysticism around it obedience to kingdom principles now most of us want miracles of fruitfulness listen we want miracles of fruitfulness in our lives. But we are unwilling to pay 
pay that price of alignment. There are people who are not consistent tithers. They have an idea that tithing is um is a system. Men of God just corner the money and they enjoy it. I mean, that, that, that is such a deception. See how cheap you gave yourself to Satan. How much is what you are bringing? For you to believe that is the reason why a man will compromise on his faith. There are all kinds of theological ideas sponsored by the gate of hell that keep people poor. Are we together? How about trusting and believing God to make you whole? Do you know there are people who do not believe? Listen, listen. There are people who do not believe in some of these testimonies you hear in the church. Maybe not in Koinonia, but in the body of Christ. When they hear something like fibro disappear, they just look and say, oh, we agree. They don't lie. Let's clap. You see, we, we mock ourselves because we have so fraternized with unbelief. It has become our template. You never refuse to agree that the person was not born with the growth. It came from nowhere. You believe that one. That it went back to where it came from. You don't believe it. Are we together? Oh, someone's genotype changed. Or oh, a woman gave birth to triplets and twins. Some of you, where is the woman? Let her come. Let's see. I must see with my own eyes. You see, let me tell you something. Do not over-intellectualize spiritual things. They are far beyond the realm of the intellect. If you learn to believe God with childlike faith and say, Lord, I know this is true. When will you believe? Are we together? Honestly, there are some of us we have never really believed anything truly. You have only been aware that it happened. But that conviction, no. I'm a believer. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Especially for those of us, listen, especially for those of us who, who claim to be a light, we have allowed education to take the place of God. And then we want God to give you a science on how these things will happen. Are we together now? God, you need to show me how this will be this and produce this. And then God says, me? give you that explanation the bible says for us you do not know the way of the wind nor how bones are formed in her that has a child how a seed a little seed from a man becomes the bones of a child that you cannot break with your hand explain that mystery says so you do not know the way of god tonight i want you to believe don't sit down asking will this genotype really change will i really be delivered Will God bless me just like that? I remember one time, people were joining the queue, I think some months ago, just to see me after service. And then um, a particular, I think it was a lady or so, just met me and she was ranting all her problems, what she felt, you know, she felt, look, I need special time. And I just touched, I said, it's done. She said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm trying to, I said, it's done. What are all these long stories you are? It's done. I touched you, I said, it's done. Now, I know what her problem will be. Even if his pain is not on her head, you just touch me and say it's done. That's how it works. It works at the speed of faith. The woman with the issue of blood did not touch the hands of Jesus. She touched the hem. Frankly, any part she touched would have produced the same result. It was never about what she touched. Are we together now? We have seen all kinds of testimonies just with one word just with one supernatural word my neighbor then i think she's somewhere here she shared her testimony here you've heard the testimony of the miracle that god did supernatural miracle all kinds of devilish thing and they said all kinds of things were you know growing and all of that in her stomach it came out it passed out like a woman gives birth to a child that's how it came oh come on See, this God, eh? Miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. 
Would you come and do a miracle? A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. One of the strategies of Satan in this season is to plant nonsense in the bodies of ladies. Very healthy lady, eating well. The moment she's about to marry, they will tell you something is wrong. Ovarian cyst, fibroid somewhere, or they will say the womb has disappeared. Are we together? Fashions of stories, sincerely communicated by well-meaning doctors, but that's a manipulation somewhere. Are we together now? To an extent, some of you ladies now are looking at me. You are even afraid. You are not even sure. You see all kinds of people. Even if you are prophesying about finances, they are laying hands on their womb and say, Lord, my own is not money. Just make sure that I give birth. When has a good thing become a thing of fear? Are we together now? And then the, the one that surprises me is the concept of impotency where they say a man no 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 that concept is a mirage plus plus you better disbelieve it gentlemen listen gentlemen listen to me don't ever don't ever i say it again allow anything to convince you that there is such a possibility like that it is it is it is an advanced form of witchcraft in the life of any man Are we together now? Don't think I'm just talking. I know what I'm saying. What you tolerate, you will never change. What you give flimsy excuses for you, it will never leave you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want you to challenge yourself and tell yourself, I must have testimonies fruitfulness is a command number two obedience to the principles of the kingdom is required to deliver your desired result the last point i'll give us and then we'll pray is that in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony now you better believe this in many cases obadiah 117 in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony that's not because you are a witch that's not because you are a wizard away with that imbalanced communication to think that the moment devils are casted out of lives and people it means that they are possessed no not at all not at all not at all and away with that wrong understanding a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be greatly influenced your faculties can come under siege siege that will look like you are possessed of devils make sure that the construction of your belief is based on the word of god so that you don't shortchange yourself of certain possibilities Look at me. There are many of us here seated looking at me. There are spirits sitting comfortably upon our lives and destinies. Every time things are not going well in your life and you do the best you can to keep certain kingdom principles, then I want you to know that you are not alone in that system. There is a stranger attempting to add to the equation something you did not add. If you keep quiet, that's how your life will go. warfare deliverance contending with the powers that be satan will not let you go just because god said to it takes force a popular scripture that has become our anthem in this place psalm 66 verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways he said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through the greatness of your discussion it takes power don't see listen you are you are coming from a family with transgenerational witchcraft i know you are in christ but listen satan does not care all that grammar is none of his business it, you have to prove you are in christ by taking advantage of the power that came through christ to put him where he belongs he says satan 
he said god had put all things under his feet speaking of man he said but as it is now we do not yet see all things under his feet faith is not foolishness you must summon the courage to confront things that have refused to go oh in the name of jesus christ i'm born again of this and that and that but you are seeing all of you you are seeing patterns that reflect a healthy living of wicked spirits jesus did not hide the fact that we are influenced perpetually by all kinds of spirits in our world who attempt to compromise on our testimony It was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that shared how that when the ministry started, great ministry now, touching people across Africa and the world. But then when they started, people would not just come pastor. For whatever reason, a very anointed man, signs and wonders, epochal revelations, but people would not come. And one time they were praying, engaging in warfare, intense warfare in the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he came out. And then after he had moved a distance the holy spirit told him turn and face you know look at the building and all of that and then he saw a thick layer covering it and this was what the lord told him he said this is the stronghold that makes people to misrepresent your ministry everything you do they see it in a bad light and he commanded it to go and it left and all of a sudden there was there was explosion kenneth e hagin teaching on his encounter with jesus his book about his encounter with jesus he gave a very dramatic scenario that happened between him and jesus he said at a point when the lord jesus christ appeared to him jesus was talking to him and was giving him some instructions all of a sudden a devil like an imp a short devil just appeared in between them and was jumping up and down you know distracting kenneth hagin kenneth hagin said he taught jesus christ being there would stop that spirit from coming yet the spirit was there jumping up and down and jesus kept talking he seemed unaffected by whatever the demon was doing but kenneth hagin was affected and jesus kept speaking kenneth hagin said it worried him for a long time until he got angry in his spirit and the holy spirit gave him a strategy and he commanded that spirit he said in the name of jesus i rebuke you and he felt and, and left and this was what jesus told him according to kenneth Hagin. he said if you did not do anything about it i would not have done anything all that it is to be done i have done how can i is nonsense the day you get up you the best way to predict your future is to create it create it create it don't sit down waiting for it to come create it listen i don't believe in circumstances i create any circumstance i want i create it the bible tells us that the word is framed framed frame your world your environment your reality is framed by the word of god obadiah 1 17 it says and upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness then it says the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions standing between the sons of jacob and their possessions are gates forces fraternities covenants of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of god's people and then he says that there shall be deliverance deliverance is not falling down necessarily it's not just manifesting and coughing out things no the context of deliverance is a platform that creates a separation on a legal basis between you and any force that keeps you bound are we together there are things that have held our lives brothers and sisters and it must let us go you must believe this don't sit down I'm, I'm telling you this thing so you don't sit down and waste your time i came with my spirit angry we're going to deal with the issue of the fruit of the womb extensively but then i want you to know the reason why the door has not opened is because there is a spirit sitting somewhere and i tell you if you let those spirits they will wreck your life wreck your life there are pastors whose churches have refused to grow. 
and they think they preach well they are anointed people they are great people but they are all kinds of forces brothers and sisters wickedness is real the bible tells you the whole world lies in wickedness don't say i didn't do anything to anybody the condition to be vulnerable to oppression is that you are born once you arrive here that's all you you are in the middle of a story that predates your existence so as you come you just join in the whole thing don't you think you have to come up with a fresh trouble? No. It is there before you arrived. Have you not seen children hated for something their parents did before they got married? And they look at you and while they are insulting the man, they say, who is this? You say, my name is David. Who's, you are his child. You are the idiot like him. You just inherited an insult. Just because you were associated with a man while they were making that trouble you were in the loins of eternity and now you came and participated tonight i want you to believe god i want you to believe god brothers and sisters there's enough grace and unction for you to receive the miracle i believe in breakthrough breakthrough is a mystery that gives men speed where limits are taken kabbalataya limits are taken limits are taken limits are taken limits are taken i don't know what has held you down you must break this limit don't sit carelessly looking some of you have some results we all have different results but is that the best god can fast track your life that between now and december 31st he will put a new song in your mouth a song of praise in your heart he said many will see and fear and put their trust in him Hallelujah. And time will fail me to speak of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought the mouth of, of lions, shot the mouth of lions, wrought righteousness. Let's look at one scripture. Romans 4, 18. I just want to touch a little on this issue of believing and faith. We just finished a series on faith. Please, I encourage everyone as God grants you grace. Make sure you get those series and listen to them. But I just want to challenge our faith a little even as we prepare to pray. There's such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a strong anointing. I'm hearing footsteps that's what I'm hearing in my spirit footsteps and the Holy Spirit is telling me he's the one walking to people's lives I'm hearing footsteps no 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 I, I believe me just, just just believe me just walk with me I'm hearing footsteps right now God will not let me continue he's walking to someone's life right now right now I'm hearing footsteps in the spirit I'm still hearing footsteps and the Holy Spirit is telling me this is his footsteps he's walking to someone's life Lord I pray in the name of Jesus I don't know where those people are but right now their stories must change must change God is not even waiting for me to finish preaching something is happening here a change of story something must change something must change Something must change. Something must change. Something is happening right now. How forcible are right words. Footsteps. I still hear these footsteps. I still hear these footsteps in my ears. And God is saying He's giving people testimonies. It's like the Spirit of God walking, walking. He will meet you where you are. He will meet you where you are. Shabalarabalarabala. Sit down. Sit down. Let's finish up. Romans 4 verse 18. Just sit down. The waters has been stirred. I just want to give you an understanding on faith. You have a role to play. Listen, please. You have a role. Don't worry about what is happening. 
You have a role to play. Please hear me. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. You're not going to sit down and just expect to be healed. You have a role to be to play. Lift your hands, gentlemen. You raising your hand. I see an angel pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. Something looking like oil. That's what I see. I don't even know you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. <sighs> My spirit is fired up. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this anointing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. Shake at Ayabada. It's the anointing that comes to the office. I feel it on me right now. A lady with a breast lump, a lady with a breast lump has just been healed right now. Check yourself. Check yourself. A lady with a breast lump, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The Bible says, Who against hope? Against hope have taught us. Against hope means in spite of the obstacles believed. Who against hope? I told you the starting point of faith is the presence of an obstacle. It is not unusual to see obstacles. There is a system to take care of them. That system is based on your conviction. Backed up by understanding. That compels you to take action. The name of that action is faith. Not the name of the believing. Believing is not faith. Believing is restful confidence. Based on an understanding. The end product of believing is conviction. When you act it. The name given to that action is faith. Listen, you can hear the most anointed word if you do not mix it with faith. Be convicted that this is the word of God and then be ready to take steps. So if you are here and you cannot stand, be ready to stand. Don't just sit down saying, well, let's see what will happen. You will go back home on that wheelchair. You are deaf, you are blind, whatever it is genotype whatever make sure you are anchoring your spirit a door has refused to open make sure that you receive there are many faith actions praise and celebrating God is an action that's how you water whatever you sow listen Jesus said and I've corrected it here I've taught us he said if you have faith as a monster seed I've told you it's not the size if you have faith and your faith works like a monster seed a monster seed is sown that means if you can plant your faith and create an environment for it to grow in the similitude of a monster seed then you can say to this mountain it was not talking about the size of faith if you have faith and you have understood how to make it operate like a monster seed then you will do great things Are we together? Tonight, I want you to refuse that any force of darkness holding your destiny will go back with you. I want you to refuse. Listen, listen. There is grace for increase. I feel it in this place. I, I just want you to believe me. You know, sometimes it's difficult communicating things to people because some, we live in an environment of such unbelief. I know the grace for increase. Listen, increase is an unction. Honor is a mantle. It can come upon a man. You can carry it bodily. Don't sit down and just waste your time. You may not be sick in your body, but there is an encounter that produces a possibility upon your life. Listen, I told you creation has never been disobedient. Something on you or not on you is what compels the response of creation. An anointing is like a mantle. It works like a charm. When it is upon your life, that anointing speaks is a language it will make creation respond to you in a certain way that's what you call favor that's what you call breakthrough 
Don't sit down asking, can I get a job? That's a very foolish question. Very foolish question. Don't sit down asking, can God make a way in the wilderness? My God. My God. My God. Ah. Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No. What you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them. No. Connect and open up your spirit. Man of God, open up for your ministry. There can be more. There can be more. There can be more. The pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going. There is a system that builds you out. Even favor, let me tell you, this favor that we think is very free, there are laws. There is an unction that brings favor. It is a manifestation of favor that is effortless. But there is a system, an exact system, a science to its coming into your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering, can God change me? Are you not seeing don't you see his signature all over? Listen. There are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom. There are dimensions of the power of God that has been vested in laws. You don't have to pray. The moment the laws are accurately um, operated, the power is released immediately. You don't have to be a Christian. But the third dimension, listen, the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with God. Listen. Men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me. You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God. Answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith. Their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing God. When, when Saul came where Samuel was, just that atmosphere implicated him. He prophesied. All kinds of things happened to him. You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see, like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants. Mysteries and covenants. 
agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen. I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight. You are not alone. There is grace for you. Rise up on your feet. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Before we begin to minister i want you to lift your voice and tell god everything you desire for him to do don't keep quiet don't say god knows open your mouth lord step into my finances lord step into my business lord step into my family faithful god hallelujah Lord, take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening. Take away the barrier, oh God, stopping my influence. Enlarge my course. answers prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Sikepa go soto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign. You reign, you reign. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me and this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people, listen, two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. And I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now, by the Spirit of God, Kaduna State, Kaduna State. I see an anointing only Kaduna State, Shabarapakata, Embreketeta, Kaduna State. A miracle happening for Kaduna people, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing, there is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance, breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete, help them please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to call in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for the Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? Yeah, like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie, who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. 
I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone, and in the vision, the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress, but I'll pray for you. Lift your hands. The Lord says, I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family. Witchcraft ends in your family. You will hear testimonies that will surprise you. Right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Now, it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Johanna. 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time. Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna. I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna. 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 Whether you're here inside or outside. Johanna. 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 There is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is Blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives. Forces of darkness. The Lord is bringing deliverance to your family. Your family. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family. And the Lord is bringing deliverance right now. Right now to the family. Right now to the family. The Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family. A major deliverance to the family. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. As I begin to pray for you. All those devils that has tied the lives of people. It doesn't mean you are possessed. It's not an insult. You may not even know. You may be minding yourself just like you're standing now. I'm going to command those devils. They must go. They are not only going to live your life. They must live your family. Are we together? Listen. Some of you brought many prayer lists. Just one spirit living will produce all that testimony. Believe me. Believe me. Lift your hands. My heart. My soul. I give to you. I bow to you my savior and king lift your hands thank you jesus father thank you for your anointing to deliver to set free there are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people and in the name of the lord jesus christ they must go i want you to bring them out now they must go they must go now at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus you'll be surprised to see what happens kai 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 I see spirits of delay, 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 delay. Spirits that have held men down, all kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Flowing sound, my flowing sound. In the name of Jesus, one, two, Three, shout Jesus. Now I command those demons. Go now. Go now. Go now. Lift your voice and begin to command every spirit. Every devil. Help them please. Go now. I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now. Inside and outside. I command you inside and outside bring them out I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice I command you you must go now now by the anointing of the Spirit release their destinies release their destinies release their breakthrough lift your hands while still praying 
I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them. And the Lord is saying to unlock those chains. Unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, any place in your life that has been chained and tied right now in Jesus' name, I command those gates be open. Be open, be open, be open, be open by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please, chains, be broken in the name of Jesus. Chains, be broken, be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, Charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow. The roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here now. Ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run. Help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus, guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Kato Sotobaya. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahaz. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiance. Uh, you have somebody there. Yes. Sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. 
Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying, I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past. Uh -uh, your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus. God is giving you a job. May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before... I pray, I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we we'll do a lot of other things, before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout I receive. Don't worry, follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, Two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. Jehovah. Shalom. Shalom. Your mighty in this place. You welcome this place. I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit, doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen, there is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online, you can follow. I want to pray. I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy and I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, one, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus. Help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God. Be established. Be established. Be established. 
be established i lose your hands i untie your hands every brother here i untie your hands be established by the spirit be established by the spirit go and buy that land by the spirit go and build that house by the spirit i open strange doors don't say you are too young is an anointing it's not your effort receive it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now leave those who are standing here very quickly if you are here specifically please listen you are here specifically trusting god to stamp the feet of satan in your family over the issue of children you know god announced beginning of october that the theme for this miracle service you've had the testimonies please don't say they have prayed for me before don't allow that unbelief destroy you are we together while you are coming there is a lady who will shout under the anointing it is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness it's a loud shout it will be loud enough for everyone to hear by the spirit in the name of jesus christ lord we give you praise that's a shout there that's a shout by the spirit there is an anointing to pray for the barren come please all those whether man woman if you are married look don't come out here if you are not married why are they here why are they all here you must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? for you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly 
as I lay my hands on you, it is done. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Now, go and carry your miracle child. Madam, carry your miracle baby. Carry it now. Carry it now. My God, I tell you, I see babies literally in the realm of the spirit. Carry it now. Carry it now. Carry it right now. Carry it right now. Miracle. 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 Shata da 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 balada. Regete gete gete. There is an unusual grace here. There is an unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 help them please, let's save time, grace, receive your miracle baby, my God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored, receive it, take it, take it, Take it, take it, take it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it, take it, take it, take it in the name of Jesus. Bring it please. in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 Miracles in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Let it be open in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 grace. Sheba da do ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Take 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 take. Eko to da ba. The Lord is healing. Irregular menstruation, irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. Now, return with your miracle child. Now, name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it ends now 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost let her go now shake it in the rush keep praying in the spirit don't just watch miracles 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 in the name of Jesus Jesus, supernatural miracles. The Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, 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 grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open, open now. 
Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka para toka toka tena ba 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 ba. Empreta koto. for you I want a woman to come up yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant you have been having nightmares somebody comes to you in the night you have you even wake up shouting you've not been able to sleep there is a pregnant woman here with that situation God wants to set you free please where are you if you care for you can come and God will set you free right now you are pregnant but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams like a nightmare Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself, for someone. Shela kurata subrege di balalaba. Embre koto shikala bariada subrati shikaria. Rendo salebrati shikaria di balalaba. Ambroto subroto shobre dege di balalaba. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living a real object please who is that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say this is bad it's like a doctor madam Kai. and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm seeing. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dear, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster that will want your life to keep going without achievement. I'm praying for you now. May that devil live your life forever in the name of Jesus. The spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of Jesus. I use her as a point of contact. This is a nice woman. She didn't bargain for this and she loves God. Are you seeing that now? Who knows, probably you were trained by white men. Or she speaks very intelligently. But everything grounded. Hold my hand, man. To a point that, that, do you know what it means? 
another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile hold my hands my hands i'm angry in my spirit in the name of the lord god that i serve i speak to you from the depth of my spirit right now i command that devil let her go now out out in the name of jesus i lay my hands on your stomach i command that wicked spirit whatever your name is don't only leave her pack your load with you and go out of this woman's life I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of Jesus over in the name of Jesus it's over in the name of Jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here I'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but I'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake Shera tabaroto koto baradia, lembra bata tatsoketia, ekarata katala totia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace, and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? She is here, but I can't locate her. Madam, come. You will see a man like, hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real,
Our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. Listen, sir. I'm not saying God told me to tell you. I am telling you. There is something called a prophet's reward. In the name that is above all names, I speak over your life. That force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity, I cancel it right now. Sir, you are struggling financially. I have to pray for you. God wants to open a door for you. I, I hope you are not embarrassed sir, that I'm talking to you. Please hold my hands. Jesus, please change our daddy's story. Let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, please, we're going to be very fast. You are here for yourself. You are not married. You are standing for something. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracle. Now, we are going to be very fast. You can see it's past nine, but there are so many things we need to do. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is. Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please, hold on overflow two just walk right to the front you don't have to come here overflow two the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses. Someone who just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. And I also understand there have been mysterious accidents. You are minding your business. Car will jam you. Bike will jam you. We are going to take care of all those things today. It's called a miracle service. Now, this is what will happen. Please and please. Anybody who lays hands on you, just go back to your seat believing in faith. We don't have time to take testimonies. I know there are so many miracles. If we do that, we're going to spend time here. There are other things we need to do. Are we together now? So I will pray for you. You can see there are so many people. Uh, let's do it this way. Pastor Pete is with me here. So um, Pastor Pete. Ah, no, Ejimi, you know what? Ejimi, Pastor Femi, you can go outside. You can just handle that, that one there. Pastor Alpha. Pastor Alpha, Kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor Ejimi, and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just I don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you we are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace 
are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise west promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we're going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father we're standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it first jesus will give you praise i have no other god but you now i have no as they pray for you just quietly you go back to your seat rejoicing go back to your seat check yourself Excellent is your name. Excellent. 
for mice in the way you should help me say you are the joy of the whole Lord. You are the joy of the whole world. And I are the joy of the whole world. You're beautiful. quickly pass your prayer requests. I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason. The Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before, before we come to prayer. I know there are people, how far have we gone? Those outside, there's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one, and then... Um, Ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You do my 
hand from the four winds of the earth a mighty presence of the spirit of god moves from the four winds of the earth the wind of god's spirit moves and the mighty hand of god an angel mighty mighty angel placing his hands upon the servants of god there'll be a quickening quickening and awakening a flame is being set upon many now upon many upon your tongue i see fire i see fire the lord puts a word in season for you some of my worship people here the lord will place upon you an unction for worship a strong unction david damn the lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing an anointing it will come upon you Pare su pretinda y lo si predia. Requito fiesta que la anda ha. Ora que te su belenda pragadose. Requete na vaca cocosho que palagana. Renda pa freia so palenda ha. Resa profilesta calionde. Para soco palagada. I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now upon the feet of many the fire of god will come upon your feet the fire of god will burn your feet there's a fire a quickening my god palio friesa kiata la ronte barus i cateli bo grakisti valande calevose Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight. 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 Tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of us. Yeah, I sense the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, we build your throne. And as we worship you, Jesus, and take, take your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, in your divine wisdom, when you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will, Lord, you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein, oh God, your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here, those that are across the world from the internet, they have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelation chapter 8 that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God. Right now by the power of God, let those angels move swiftly in the name of Jesus. An angel appeared unto Daniel and said, I have come because of your word. Father, let angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availed much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God with results and answers and the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now we release grace and Lord we release mercy in the name of Jesus. Every prayer written in this ground upon this mountain it is answered in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Aside from those that are still praying for peace, everybody rise up. Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the Spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you, I declare the grace that makes things work, the power of performance, receive it right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Everything dead in your life, I don't care what and I don't care how long. In the name of the one who raised from the dead, I command that thing to come back to life. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands. Tonight, like Pastor Jake prayed, revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit. Receive it is coming on you. 
receive it is coming on you receive it is coming on you supernatural impartation I pray for you everyone here who wants to start a business start a company start something any value adding platform I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me I program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of Jesus we change it here right now believe God we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories I separate you and bad luck forever I separate you and tragedy forever hallelujah this spirit that came to Zaria that is causing men to be sick hear my voice there is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore i stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we banish such operations in the name of jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and i speak prophetically across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of jesus i command the gates closed over you i command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left i don't care where it went to i call it back may it gather its kind and come to you i say it again everything that has left your life has left your hands may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of Jesus I force you to rise in the name of Jesus I force you to grow if there is anybody in this place from January till now you have not stood here to testify I prophesy to you now and the next 30 days may it be your turn to stand here believe me believe me now and the next 30 days may you stand here to testify anyone here called jobless or you are doing a job that is not a job any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible sizable benefit in the name of Jesus I don't know where the jobs are we create vacancies and put you there we create vacancies and put you there any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed I declare their prayers answer tonight I declare their prayers answer tonight 
I pray for you. Listen. There is a mantle of honor upon this house. And if you belong to this family, it should be evident in your life. And in case it's not yet working, like a programming in a computer, like an antivirus, I place that mantle of honor upon you. May it shield you from shame. May it, may it shield you from shame. Hallelujah. Every spiritual life that has died here, no more passion for the things of God, no more passion for prayer, no more passion for the word of God. I plant in you a fresh passion tonight. Fresh passion tonight. We're rounding up. Every family represented here that has not had a reason to smile this year. It's been tears and tears from home. Every time they call you from home, one episode of bad luck. May this be the first good news you will hear. Good news of breakthrough. Good news of increase. Good news of speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever rises up to find you, may the God that I serve, even in the secret, may he fight them. We're rounding up. I pray for you. Barrenness or its kind looming around your life, looming around your environment whether in your body, whether in your finances, whether in the works of your hands, in your ministry, in your business, I pray for you. The water that flows, that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree, I introduce that water into your life. Therefore, I prophesy to you, in the name of Jesus, be fruitful. Fruitful, multiply, multiply, replenish, subdue, and may you command absolute dominion, absolute dominion. Help them, please. Every strange nightmare, strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever the name of Jesus Christ and I pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west, to the north, to the south. Whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level, I prophesy and I call them into your destiny. I prophesy and I call them into your destiny. There's someone here, God is giving you a word. Go and register a company and just keep it. You may not know what to do with it, but just keep it. Keep it and give God space to use it and surprise you. That's a prophetic word for somebody here. Just register it and keep it. You, There is no business to source for. Don't worry. Register it and keep it. And give God space to surprise you. May that happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble I declare where the devil put a comma I change it to a full stop 
Never again. Never again. Never again. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here. You need Jesus. You are saying, man of God, I have watched the things that the Holy Spirit has done. I have seen the transformation. Keep standing, please. No sitting, no moving around. Let's stand up, please. Keep standing. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I want you to pray for me. I love Jesus Christ. But for some reason, my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him. And there are others who are saying, man of God, this is the first time. I've always mocked at the things of God. I've never really been serious. But now, I'm making up my mind for Jesus. Overflow 1, overflow 2, all following us online. Wherever you are. I know that our time is gone, but let's honor Jesus. We cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity. Wherever you are. Don't wait for anybody to come. Be the first. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. And come and stand here. I want to lead you to Jesus. Jesus is already talking to some people. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. There are people outside. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't stroll around. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. I'll count one to five. And that will be it. Two. Lord, I give you my life. Three. Please, we're out of time. Run. Run to Jesus. I live. For you alone, Come to him, he will give you a fresh start, a new beginning. Will you have your way? I give you my heart. Hallelujah. If you are still coming, please rush and join them. It should not take a long time. If you are still indecisive, then just remain at your seat. By now, you should know where you stand. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who were saved, those who were lost. If you are not sure you are saved, come out and join them. Because it means that you are not, you are not saved. You should be very sure. If you are a man of God, it's like, I think I'm saved. Come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in Christ in the name of Jesus I appreciate everyone daddy thank you for coming and all those who have come to make this decision please understand you are not reciting a poem don't be emotional about it this is a simple decision but it's the greatest miracle you are opening up your heart to the life of God the Bible says and this life is in his son it says he that hath the son hath eternal life say this after me with all your heart and sincerely say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart tonight I come to you and I declare that you receive my life and manage it for me I receive your life into my spirit I declare that from today Jesus is my Lord my savior my friend and my king i declare that satan has no power over my life i'm a child of god i'm born again in the name of jesus christ father i stretch my hands towards these great precious people bless them let this decision be genuine and let this be the beginning of great days in their lives i anoint you with grace I command that you begin to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God in the land of the living. I plant in you like a virus, a hunger for the things of God. And I declare that it will override every other passion in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision that you have made. Now hold on please. I want you to do two things for me. Number one, the Bible says, They that be planted in the house of the Lord, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Visiting the house of God is not the key to consistency. You must settle down and receive the word. Our prayer meetings, um, Tuesdays, except for this week, we're making a little adjustment. I'm going to bring an announcement on that shortly. But you can be part of it for at least one month so that you can build your spiritual life. And then I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and then they'll warmly follow you up on our behalf and the lord will bless you in jesus name please this way all of you god bless you god bless you in jesus name koinonia are you appreciating them dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.